So thank you, Danny. I'd like to start with one of our most exciting projects uh, at BGU, at ABC Robotics. And the project is Sweeper. Sweeper was an EU project that just wrapped up, a huge project in which we developed the first sweet pepper harvesting robot, the first robot in the world that harvests peppers. As Danny mentioned, there's a big problem with manual labor in agriculture worldwide. Since my days at Purdue 30 years ago, when I developed the first melon harvester, there's been a lack of workers in agriculture and we're trying to fill that gap. Why peppers? Peppers, first of all, are a high quality product. They must be selectively harvested. So you can't build any machine. We build also a lot of machines, but you can't build any machine that comes through and harvests pepper all at once. And second of all, they grow in the most complicated environment, making it a big challenge for us researchers. So BGU was part of this huge EU project. EU projects are very competitive. Only 10% of the projects get funded. We were lucky and got funded. BGU was responsible in this project of the most critical part, which is the intelligent sensing. So when you will need to develop a robot, you need to develop a robot that is able to detect the peppers. Once you detect the peppers, you need to figure out how to get there. And you'll soon see it's quite complicated. Once you get there, you need to decide if the pepper is ripe. And then you go and must harvest only the right peppers. So let's just see a bit of sweeper. To build the first sweet pepper harvesting robot, that was the goal of the sweeper project. Increasing the efficiency and reducing labour dependence will ensure Europe's high-tech greenhouse food production yields and competitiveness. The robot is an assembly of an autonomous mobile platform with a robotic arm holding an end effector for fruit harvesting. The robotic arm with the end effector scans the crop for mature peppers. The camera operates completely independently from surrounding light conditions. It gives colour images and a distance map. This information is used for pepper detection, localization, and maturity classification. So after 30 years of developing robots for agriculture, our ideas are finally penetrating into market and we're starting to see commercialization of our ideas. Sorry. Agriculture is one of the most complicated places to develop a robot. That's why I'm there. That's why I'm developing robots for agriculture. First of all, the environment. The agriculture environment is unknown. You cannot develop any model in advance in order to model the robotic motions. It is very dynamic. Things change all the time. Sometimes there's light. Sometimes there's cloud. Sometimes it's dark. Very unstructured very high variable and a very tough environment. There's dirt, high humidity, high temperature. But moreover, the objects are the most complicated objects for a, for a robot to deal with. There's high variability in color, shape, size, texture, maturity. Look at the picture here on the bottom left. Peppers, three different maturity levels and you have to decide which one is ripe, which one is not ripe. And the middle one might be ripe. If you look at it at the back, it might be yellow. Changing illumination. You have a dark situation sometimes and you have a very light bright because the sun, you're facing into the sun. You have obstruction and the obstruction also obstructs you to see the, the fruit, but also furthermore complicates when we try to reach out and grasp it. And the product is cheap. Now, being in robotics for so long, industrial robotics came into market in the 50s. Industrial robotics deal with a structured environment and a structured object. 
Military robotics came into about 20 years ago. They are dealing with a very unstructured environment like agriculture, but their product, their object is more or less structured. They're looking for tanks, they're looking for people, they're looking for objects that are well identified. Medical robotics came into commercialization a decade ago. They're working in a very <laughs> controlled environment. Their objects are biological, are very highly variable. However, both military and medical robots, I can spend over $1 million for a robot. In agriculture, I'm dealing with the most complicated environment, with the most complicated object, and I can spend maximum $100,000 euros, depending where you're talking, for a robot. And I must develop a very robust robot. So this is really a complicated, and our achievement is a, is a big uh, wow. But this is just one of our amazing projects, and I'll try to go and show you some more and give you a glance, an overview of ABC Robotics at BGU. ABC Robotics, Agriculture, Biological, Cognitive Robotics at BGU was founded a couple of years ago, <coughs> aiming to develop innovative multidisciplinary robotics research, and we will have a look at some of our great, interesting projects. At ABC Robotics, we're dealing with all the basics. Sensing, planning, control, design, human-robot collaboration. And we're advancing theoretical foundations in these areas. But we're ensuring in parallel that we're dealing also with interesting applications. We're de developing robots, ground, aerial, underwater. And you'll see some of them. We'll see some more of our agriculture robots we're developing robots for health applications, for physical therapy, for cognitive robotics, assistive robotics. And the main idea of ABC Robotics, and this is what is, what is new, is in addition in, in developing the main aspects of robotics, the mainstream of robotics, we brought together researchers from across campus. And it's not easy to put researchers together. But at BGU, it's easy. You can do really anything. We brought in faculty, we brought in the mainstream faculty, and you'll be meeting, you're meeting uh, some of them today from mechanical engineering, industrial engineering, electrical engineering, computer science. Those are the mainstream robotics researchers. But we tie them together with researchers from psychology, from cognitive sciences, from health sciences, medical doctors, and we force them to work together. Now, these strong collaborations really create new directions, and they spark new ideas. And I'll be really just showing you some of these ideas and just an example of how you put research together. Yes, we have a leading cognitive science department. We have a new brain scientist who we put in to work on developing human machine brain interfaces for controlling a swarm of robots. Because yes, it's very easy to control one robot. <coughs> but if I put in a whole bunch of robots, how do you control them? So we're developing human machine brain interfaces for these. So let's go through the ABCs of ABC Robotics. And ABC Robotics is Agriculture, Biological, Cognitive uh, Robotics. Agriculture. BGU, at BGU, we are a world leader in agriculture robotics. With funding really from a very wide spectrum of domains. We have funding from our ministries of agriculture, ministry of science, from the EU, as I mentioned, and we really have a lot of exciting work going on. One of the projects, and I invite you all to come and see more in May. I couldn't, we couldn't bring the robots, they're too big. One of the projects, uh, we developed a vineyard site-specific sprayer. The current practice in spraying is you go through the field and you spray everything and everywhere. We developed a sprayer that is able to detect the grape clusters and sprays only on the grape clusters. We proved in our operations research work that we are able to save 70% of the material applied. Saving 70% of the material applied has important economic effect for the farmer, that's of course, so it's a big reduction in cost. But more than that, it has tremendous environmental impact. And that's the main issue. So we're able to save 70% of the material that reaches the ground, reaches the water, 
reaches us as humans just by developing this technology. This technology was also developed with a very great project with Amir, who will be later, later showing you some other exciting projects for dates spraying. Dates are grown 80 meters above, and in order to spray there, you need to be very focused and very directed. And currently, all these tasks are totally manual labor. There are no machines. There's a lack of bees in the world, in California especially, by the way. With all the almonds growing, there's a big lack of bees. So we had a group of researchers through ABC that working together, a mechanical engineer together with a computer scientist, came together and came up with this idea that instead of have, since there is a lack of since there is a lack of bees, let's put a drone into the greenhouse and have them pollinate. So we developed a system in order to detect flowers. And the drones in a very sophisticated design, which I won't go into detail uh, here, the drones are pollinating these flowers and are saving the use of bees. However, in addition to the agricultural robotics, and I would say a big aspect of the A, is our achievements and are our students. And I would like, really, I was very uh, excited to hear, to see here, two of my first graduates came to this meeting today, especially uh, since they noticed that I would be speaking. Our students are really what excites me and are really what challenges me. And uh, Danny mentioned, yes, I escaped from all my administrative tasks to go into the lab and to work with this amazing uh, generation. My lab, our labs are full of students, international students. You have here on the right bottom, Samuel from Nigeria is on an EU project, allows us to hire only external students. He's working on social robots for the older society. I'll show you at the end some of his work. Shikar from India is working on polite robots, developing the next generation of robots that will be uh, polite. We hosted, last semester, we hosted... Oh, that's another issue. No, he's from India. Okay? But these two students are educating our Israeli students how to be polite. And I can, I can give some more details on that later on. Uh, we hosted two great students, Rick and Wouter from Wachengen University. It's the leading institute worldwide in agriculture engineering. They came to us specially to BGU for a full semester to work with us on innovative agriculture robotics research. We have a whole bunch of Israeli students, of course, and these students are really, really making an impact. And I'm just giving really some examples, but two of our recent students who just graduated got postdoc positions in leading research institu institutes. One is just wrapping up his postdoc here at University of Berkeley at the leading agricultural robotics uh, institute. He's heading back to the Institute of Agriculture Engineering in a research position. Another got a position at the Autonomous Systems uh, Group, a leading group in Sweden. Our students are making an impact in, Isra in industry, in Israeli industry and in worldwide industry. One of the CTOs of the Israeli Aerospace Industries in Robotics is our graduate, and they worked together with me and Amir in one of our first collaborative robotic projects. Effie was in charge of developing, and you go, go ahead and look up because you are fortunate and you can only buy that robot here in the States. We can't buy it in Israel. Timi, he was responsible of developing the Timi Home Robot Social Robot, T-E-M-I. He's currently in a new position in one of the leading robotic companies in Europe. We are making an impact on Israeli academics. The head of the Institute of Agriculture Engineering at the Volcani Institute, the parallel to the USDA, is our graduate. A, I kind of closed the loop with one of my first students coming back, and he's an associate professor at Purdue, which was a great honor to me, a great loss to Israel, to Israel but his wife, uh, was from the state, so they wanted to come back to the state. He's a leading associate professor in industrial engineering at Purdue. Uri Carton, he's the IB, he was just nominated the IBM Master Inventor. And this is a great, great honor to us. 
And our students are really, really making an impact in leading Israeli and international robotic uh, companies. And these are just an ex some example. And just to show you how the world is really global, one of our students, a French student, who came to BGU to do his PhD at BGU, and when he finished, he went back to France. And he is the CEO of a, of a leading startup company, Waika, who's developing robots for warehouses in France. But since he was well aware of BGU and well aware of BGU graduates, he is now linked up with a, with a big team at Trax. Trax is a leading Israeli startup company. BGU graduates dominated, okay? The whole, also the project managers there are from IEM, but all the computer vision. They're one of the worldwide leaders in computer vision for retail. So they're putting force together in order to develop robots that will go through the supermarkets and you are invited to go to Azrieli supermarket, Supercell, and see the robot go there and track what's missing on the shelves and automatically refill what is missing. So yes, these, we are making an impact really everywhere, all over. B, biological. But before I go to biological, yes, thanks to ABC Robotics, we were able to recruit the best and the brightest to BGU. And these are just some of our examples Ilana Niski in the biomedical department who has just nominated the IEEE most prestigious award, Young Researcher Award in Robotics. Uh, Jessica, you'll be soon hearing from, both are from Stanford, came to BGU. David, a Fulbright Fellow, he was a Fulbright Fellow at UC Berkeley, came to BGU. Shelley Levitzedek finished, finished her PhD in MIT in bioengineering and she's in physical therapy. Oren Shriki, was in a special brain scientist unit in uh, NIH. And finally, Lior, a motor control expert, uh, came to us from Columbia University. So we were able to bring back these great people. And they are currently developing, really, the most advanced and novel robots. And I'll just show you a bit of uh, the work of uh, David Zaruk, who unfortunately couldn't be here. And he's really developing neat stuff. So he's developing a flying and driving robot, a robot that can walk, roam around, whatever. If he gets it encountered with an obstacle, he just flies over it. He goes out the doors and he starts flying. Okay, so this is a robot that has no obstacles forever, can go through anywhere. And if I'm quoting uh, one of our international reviewers from MIT and from Bristol Robotics Lab, and this also is a quote for Amir's great work, <laughs> our researchers can do anything. Mechanical design, okay? This is sophisticated mechanical design, making it work. You need to go up the stairs. It doesn't know how to open the elevator. We have another project dealing with how do you open an elevator, okay? But he wants, he just does the mechanical engineering uh, and develops uh, this robot. Another robot is this one. Okay, the robots are 3D printed. You can print it at home. Where's the young guy here? Okay, so it really can go through everywhere. In biological robotics, we're also deal dealing with several research projects dealing with adding sensing to the robots. Most robots to date are focused on vision, com cameras, which are easy. We have gone through another approach. We're adding ears to the robot. We brought in an acoustic expert, had nothing to do with robots at all, Professor Boaz Raffaele from Electrical Engineering, an expert, international expert in acoustics, and he added hearing to the robots. 
We brought in an excellent group from neurosciences, and they are trying to figure out the whiskers of the rat, because we want robots that work also in the dark, okay? We need to navigate also when it's dark, and we don't have the computer cameras working. Uh, so rats, they have tremendous physical properties on the whiskers, and they are able to feel. Each whisker, by the way, has different uh, physical properties, and even along each whisker, the sensitivity changes. And this way, we're trying to develop the new generation of robots. A sensing is not enough. You need also smart and simple motion. And Amir is developing a whole bunch of bio-inspired robots, snake robots, snail robots, mule robots. And you'll see some of his interesting and exciting work later. So I'll go on with our Cs. And our Cs is cognitive robotics and creative collaborations. In cognitive robotics research, we're focusing on human behavior. And we have different di directions there. One of the directions is how do drivers interact with autonomous cars? Okay, we all know that we can build a, a car that it drives autonomously. But what happens if it mix, mixes with a human? And then, then it becomes a mess. So we're trying to develop different types of controls for these mixed platoons of robots. We're developing a lot of work in imitation learning. Okay, we all know that a baby learns to walk in one year. We, st we robotics researchers are still figuring out how to make robots work. And yes, you'll look at a lot of movies, you'll see a lot of nice stuff, but it's still complicated. So we're trying to develop a lot of imitation learning tasks uh, for industrial tasks, for cre creating robots to dance, and so on. Uh, we're designing exoskeletons to help older people stand up from a sitting position, to help people jump, to help soldiers in the army, you, harvesting energy from the knee. When I'm walking, I can harvest the energy and use it in order to fix up my computer or my cell or my GPS so I can navigate better. We're also developing sophisticated medical robotic assistives. We are working with medical doctors, and we're trying to develop what we call the sixth sense for the medical robots. Robots today in surgery are teleoperated, are operated by uh, the doctors, but they provide the doctors only with imaging sensing. We're trying to add haptics, and we're trying to add in this project in, we in which we brought in a material scientist, an expert in material engineering, and he's trying to convey to the doctors when the doctor, by mistake, hit a blood vessel and blood is starting to come out. So we want to try to give the doctors a pre-alert on this by developing uh, the sensing. But what really excites me is really the next glance generation of projects in which we extended even further and brought into this unique ABC framework also researchers from the arts from communication sciences, from philosophy, okay? We have a new project, I invite you in three years to see the outset of this, a, of a robot that is trying to put together parts, working, we have a computer vision expert, working with one of our leading archeological experts, some of you might have known him, he was the vice president, uh, Stephen Rosen. So they're trying to develop a robot for this. We just recently started, and we actually, Danny hosted the first meeting, the first day he came to BGU. The first workshop we had on arts and design and robots with a leading professor, Ken, from Berkeley, together with a leading professor from London School of Arts, and we're trying to work on a new design concept. How do you design uh, the next generation of robots? Uh, we're dealing a lot with human factors and the link between human factors and robotics, and these are just some of our examples. A, again, projects funded by the EU, funded by the Ministry of Science, in which we're developing a physical training robot. A, we're developing a system that if you're sitting too long, one of the biggest problems for engineers in Google also, but also for older adults at home, is the sedentary behavior. We want the people to be pushed up. So when we realize that people are, not, are sitting too long, they get an alert and they have to do start some physical training. We're developing the same kind of tool for physical therapy. We all know that we go to a physical therapist once a week, 
get some exercise, which we very fewly do, and if we do, we probably do it incorrectly. So if I just loan this robot home, they can correct themselves and they can be motivated. And I'll soon show you, so how do we try to motivate the people to do the exercise? And then the rehabilitation is much, much stronger because the more we practice, the better we will do. And one of our projects in which we were trying, this was published in many of the leading uh, robotic avenues, in which we were trying to evaluate how to increase motivation, how to increase en engagement of the users. We developed a cognitive training game in which this robot will be in an older house setting. The people can come down when they're going to lunch or to dinner and they can play with the robot, increase their cognitive uh, cap capabilities. But we need to create the motivation. So what we were evaluating is here is the feedback. What type of feedback? How do you give positive feedback? Do you give negative feedback? How do you give negative feedback? And look, when you're looking at the video, see the engagement of even the young students that knew that they were in an experiment. But see how they're really having, oh, sorry. Okay, so the robot is presenting, this is Pepper. The robot is presenting a game. And the users have to copy the game in the same order put the cups in the same order, the same colors, and now we're evaluating responses for winning. Okay, so he says, go on, you did good. And the, the woman says, this I need for my grandchildren. Okay, you might get, go, get to the Guinness uh, record. Okay, you have a memory of an elephant. You're not doing good. And you can really see the response of the student. And they know this is an experiment, but the engagement, you can develop a robotic system, but if you don't deal with the human factors, you won't be able to do anything. This gives me excitement, I want to dance. Okay, you play greatly. And now we'll soon see, what do I do when I have negative? Okay, now I want to increase the level of complexity. I want to keep the people engaged, so when the person is doing good enough, I detect it and I increase the complexity level by telling him to add another Okay, and now what do I do when the user is not good? Okay, now you made a mistake. Next time you'll do better, hopefully. You did it wrong. Try again. Let's do it again. Okay, and we don't want to disencourage the people. Okay, next time you for sure you'll do better. Okay, because we want them to keep on playing. And this is bad. You did a mistake. But you for sure will do better next time. Maybe. Okay, and what are the feedback at the end of the game? Okay, hallelujah. Okay, you finished. Hallelujah. And just see how the people are. Okay, she was not that happy. Okay. So I'd like, first of all, to thank all of my students and colleagues uh, who are really contributing on a daily basis to this exciting work. I really gave you just a glance at some of our wonderful researchers and innovative projects and really invite you to come and see more in the labs and if you have any questions I'll be here all day today tomorrow so please feel free. Great.